Now, originally, the Americans planned to get a man on the moon by 1970. Well, I think that's a bit optimistic, and 1972 or 1973 is a more conservative estimate. But, quite honestly, I tend to be a bit wary about this, and I shall be a bit surprised if it happens before 1980 or so, though I may be completely wrong. There is so much we don't know at the present moment, and, for example, it's just starting to look now as though the effects of weightlessness, or zero gravity, may be less harmless than we'd thought. And it may well be that men who have been weightless in space for more than a few days uh, may suffer ill effects because of the heart or the circulation of the body or something of that kind. We just don't know. Anyhow, a great deal remains to be done. But also, we've got to find out more about the moon itself. Now, I've been to America because the New York Academy of Sciences called a conference of lunar specialists to discuss problems of what I suppose we must call the geology of the moon. <clears throat> and all kinds of people went there. Because after all, if we're going to go to the moon, we've got to tell our astronauts what to expect. Recently, for example, a great deal has been heard of the so-called dust drift theory, according to which the waterless seas of the moon, those dark patches you can see, are in fact uh, seas of soft dust. Well, if you made a long and dangerous crossing through space and then landed on the moon to find that you sank out of sight uh, permanently and completely in a dust ocean, well, I think it would be rather disappointing.